complex. It sat empty for 10 months, then it got repaired. But now they wonder why they can't swim in it. Every time that there's a huge event, a world event, there will always be the organized crime. Local leaders and law enforcement learning ways to fight back against human trafficking. A class action lawsuit that could benefit hundreds of thousands of California homeowners insured under the FAIR plan. And how you can support a new documentary about the power of sports and amputee community. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts right now. We begin tonight with a weather alert for parts of San Diego County. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Let's get straight to that alert. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis joins us now with what's going on. Carlene, there are concerns over flooding. There's concerns over flooding. There's concerns over severe thunderstorms. Now, most of this activity was going to be confined to the mountains, but we're starting to see that activity drift a little bit more west. So this is the view right now. This is what you're seeing looking east. This is a view from Mount Laguna. There are strong cells that are in the area, and that's why you're starting to get those alerts coming across the phone as well as on your TV screen. So when we take a look at the radar, we are looking at some lighter shower activity that's impacting us here in Kearney Mesa as well as for downtown. But we did have some stronger cells earlier and they're starting to fall apart especially near Ramona but you're still seeing some of that activity across the mountains so let's go ahead and break down the alerts that are in effect so your thunderstorm warning you're seeing that near Ramona just towards the southeast of Ramona also right along the eight be, uh, along the eight between Imperial and basically Imperial County line all the way towards Boulevard that's because of strong gusts upwards of about 60 miles per hour frequent lightning and also pea-sized hail that has been detected we had stronger cells in the area earlier they're near the eight and that's why you're seeing the flash flood warning as well as flood advisories that will keep going all the way past about 7 p.m. tonight. So we will go ahead and continue to break this down as well as talk about the heat and the alerts that are going to be in effect because of it coming up. Marcella. Thanks so much, Carlene. And for the very latest weather conditions and alerts on the go, you can download our free CBS 8 app from Google Play or the Apple App Store. Everybody was ready to go swimming. The pool at an Escondido apartment complex for seniors was closed for repairs for nearly a year when residents called us for help. It's fixed now, but residents, they're still waiting to dive in. This is an update to a story we first brought to you last month. We are working for you to find out why the seniors can't swim or even cool off in the pool just yet. CBS 8's Abby Black joins us live from Escondido with the answers. Abby. Marcella and Carlo, last month our questions led to the seniors living here at the Birchmont apartment complex in Escondido to get their pool repaired. It's been finished, but they still can't get inside to take a swim. We're working for you to find out and get clarification on what's going on. Locked out. Dana Matson wants to know why he can't take a dip in the sparkling pool where he lives at Birchmont Senior Apartment Complex in Escondido. I didn't get any straight answers as far as I'm concerned. This is the second time Matson reached out to CBS 8 for help. It had been 10 months and we got nowhere and uh, I decided to call Channel 8 News and you guys were on it immediately. Working for you, CBS 8 called and emailed property managers last month to find out why work on a swimming pool was abandoned for 10 months. The day after our inquiries, crews arrived to repair the existing pool. One of the you know, construction guys he told me that it wasn't about permits. He says it was about money. Management told CBS 8 the delay was because of permits, but the city manager told us they couldn't find any permit applications. Three weeks later, we're back to find out why there's water in the pool, but it's still closed. Residents have told me that it's now been repaired, but now they're being told that they can't go in for another month. I called the apartment office. The person declined an on-camera interview, but did tell me on the phone they're waiting for the pool to cure in the county's final inspection. I, I'm just trying to clear up any confusion. I spoke to a pool expert and confirmed what he told me. He says the National Plasters Council recommends a 28-day waiting period for a pool to cure and balance chemicals. Okay, I'm going to check with the county on that then. The county tells me under the Department of Environmental Health and Quality, or DHQ, there are state regulations pertaining to construction, maintenance, and water quality of swimming pools. They say when the pool is complete and before opening for swimmers, the operators will call DHQ and schedule a final inspection to ensure it's safe. A spokesperson says plans for the Birchmont improvements were submitted on April 29, 2024 and approved on July 1st. This is long after residents say the pool work was abandoned. Uh, it sucks. It's just showing no respect for the tenants. 
If all goes well, the pool could be inspected and approved by mid-August. Summer's over in another month, so we've, we've, we will have waited over a year. Matson says that during this pool closure, of course, he could not use the pool, but the apartment still jacked up his rent $200. Marcella. Abby, you know, if you have a swimming pool at home, I'm just curious, and you want to replaster or surface that, do you also have to submit plans to the county and let them have a final inspection? Well, that's what it, right. I mean, I learned that through the process because I thought, well, what about people who have their own private pools at home? Do they have to get approval from the county? Because this wasn't really something that I had heard of before. And no, if you have your own private pool that's own, at home, if you're doing some normal replaster or resurfacing, you do not need the county's approval. That's what they say. Now, the Birchmont pool here in Escondido, it is considered a public pool, so it would need the county's approval. All right. Well, hopefully it will open in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for getting to the bottom of that. Remember, if there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Law enforcement and leaders from both sides of the border are in Chula Vista learning ways to fight back against human trafficking. The conference comes a day after State Attorney General Rob Bonta announced more than a dozen people were arrested in an undercover sting operation during Comic-Con. Ten potential victims were rescued, including a 16-year-old girl. California's Justice Department says human trafficking is one of the fastest growing forms of organized crime. We're told 3,500 adults and children are bought and sold in San Diego each year, generating more than $800 million. The Sheriff's Department says traffickers often use social media to lure in young victims. Traffickers are no longer strangers. If you've posted on my Instagram, you've, um, we've, been, we've known each other for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden you invite me out for lunch or dinner or so on and so forth, and that's how the relationship starts to grow. We're told trafficking victims are not always taken away from their homes. They may tell their parents they're at school during the daytime, even though they're not, and then they return to their homes at night. The Sheriff's Department says to look out for warning signs like expensive gifts or new friends you've never met before. Tonight, excessive heat is back across much of the country and for us here out in the West, that could worsen an already extreme fire season. Cal Fire officials say the park fire that's burning up near the city of Chico is now 18 percent contained. It has scorched nearly 400,000 acres and smoke is now drifting into Nevada. Fire officials blame two consecutive years of wet winters and mild fire seasons, along with climate change, for fueling these flames. Crews are now racing to burn excess dry vegetation. Fuels are just completely dried out. We can't eliminate all grasses from the entire state of California. What we attempt to do is create areas where we could stop a fire uh, when it's still at its initial stage. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, almost 28,000 firefighters are now battling 95 large fires across the U.S. And that includes the Nixon Fire, which is burning just north of San Diego County, up in Riverside County. Crews are making progress against the flames. At last check, it had burned nearly 5,200 acres with containment up to 14 percent. Fire officials believe they will gain additional control in the coming days but are cautious as those monsoonal flows are expected over the fire, and that could bring thunder and lightning to the area. The insurance crisis here in California has forced homeowners to turn to state's FAIR plan for fire coverage. But now a new lawsuit alleges the FAIR plan has illegally been denying fire damage claims for years. CBS 8's David Gobson talked to the attorney who filed the class action lawsuit about what this means for homeowners. Many of the nearly 500 homes and structures destroyed in the Park Fire north of Sacramento are insured for fire damage under the state's FAIR plan. It's expensive insurance of last resort that homeowners are forced into after they get canceled by mainstream insurance carriers like State Farm. The goal of the lawsuit is to, is to obtain the minimum, uh, mandatory minimum coverage for all FAIR plan customers. Attorney Dan Schaffer is suing the California Fair Plan in Alameda County on behalf of 400,000 homeowners across the state currently depending on the Fair Plan. The lawsuit alleges the Fair Plan is not covering all fire damage as required by state law. Just because it's caused by components of fire that are not heat um, doesn't make them not fire damage. 
specifically smoke and debris damage to nearby homes not destroyed by a wildfire. Schaffer says the fair plan updated its policies in 2017, allowing the agency to deny some 3,000 claims statewide. Let's say uh, you're in a wildfire zone and three houses around you all burn to the ground. So what happens to those houses? Well, all that stuff goes up into the atmosphere and it ends up in your house. A fair plan spokesperson emailed me a statement saying it does not comment on pending litigation, but Schaefer expects to win the case, and he says in about 12 months, the fair plan should be forced to cover smoke and debris damage across the state. They make money by cheating customers, by providing inadequate coverage, and by charging high rates. Schaffer also has a separate lawsuit pending in Los Angeles against the fair plan. That case could force the agency to take another look at all those claims it denied going back to 2017. David Godfordson, CBS 8. Thanks so much, David. Tonight, the search is on for the person who abandoned these two golden retrievers. The San Diego Humane Society says a man dropped them off at the Oceanside campus last week and the dogs might have been abused. Both dogs are male and are between nine and 10 months old. They have microchips, but those have not been updated. The Humane Society says the man who brought them in has been cooperating with the investigation. It's our responsibility to be the voice for animals. They certainly don't have a voice for themselves. And if you have information, please contact us. You can be anonymous. The Humane Society also says if you need to give up your pet for any reason, please make an appointment with them. They're also encouraging people to adopt since shelters are way over capacity at the moment. There are less than two weeks to go until San Diego Unified starts its new school year. Almost fall time again. And Council Member Stephen Whitburn wants to make sure that students and teachers in his district are prepared. He is currently accepting donations for his back to school drive. And he is inviting community members, businesses and organizations to donate things like backpacks, notebooks, pens, pencils and other school supplies. Those tools will then be given to hundreds of students and teachers across nearly a dozen public schools that we should all play a role in advocating for our schools and ensuring that children have access to quality education. Donations will be accepted through the end of the month and can be dropped off at the North Park, University Heights, Mission Hills, Hillcrest, and Central Libraries. There is much more ahead on CBS 8 News Live 6. Including how a grant from the EPA will help fund climate resiliency projects in San Diego's historic Spanish-speaking communities. That's coming up in a live interview. And later, the latest on a historic prisoner swap involving the brother of a man who lives here in San Diego.